So what's the solution? This is the solution that I've come up with and I've watched it work not only with myself, but hundreds of people on my team. I've watched people use this to uh, change their life, change their relationships, pay off debt, buy new houses. I've watched them show up as a completely different person, the person who could be successful. And that's what I wanna help you do. I don't wanna help you get things. I wanna help you become something just like I've been helped. So I'm gonna share with you what we've created here. Hello and welcome, this is Brian Delaney with Unlock Potential, where we get together with top experts in their field who have simple, profound advice to help you and I live better lives, to be able to be more fit to serve the people around us and answer that question, the question that nags within all of us, how good can I be and how great can I make it for people around me? Hello and welcome to the Unlock Potential Podcast. I'm Brian Delaney and I've got a special treat for you today. Today, we're gonna be breaking down the S3 goal setting system, which is gonna help you get to the next level in your life and know how to continue to grow after you have set and met your goals. So excited today to be able to deliver value to you. Uh, I know how valuable this system has been for me, parts of the system that I was given, parts of the system that I've synthesized and created over time through being able to tap into uh, coaches, mentors, uh, and just the experiences that I've had along the way. Uh, You may be having a similar experience that I did early on in my life. The goals would go set and unmet. It would uh, goals were a point of frustration. They were it was agonizing to set new goals, not hit them, have less self belief, less energy, try to will myself to do it again, just to find myself at or near the same place that I started. Is that you? That was me. Now there's a lot of great systems out there for setting goals and the first thing that I will tell you is don't try to do it perfectly, just start doing it. The data shows very clearly that people who set goals of any kind as long as they're written down are 40% more likely to achieve their goals than those who don't. And I personally know that those numbers are low, especially for somebody like me and maybe for you too. The first thing that I had to understand was what's wrong with traditional goal setting? What's wrong with the traditional ideas around making progress over time? You know, Jim Rohn talks about it, uh, reasonable progress over measurable periods of time. I'll show you exactly what's wrong with that. Where do most people start? Most people start from where they are, where they are. And that's, that's really the biggest problem. They start from where they are, which let's just call that skill set, what you do currently, right? That's the third S in the S3. We have skill set. We have strategy. And most importantly, we have self-identity. So what do most people do? Most people do and do and do and do hoping their future comes true. And that's a big mistake. They start over here at skill and they try to skill an effort their way to the future that they desire, to the feelings that they desire, to to the outcomes, to to the, the parts that they want. But what they find out very quickly is as they do those things, they don't have the right strategy. They don't have the right resource. They're not resourced up to get there. There's no bridge between what they do and what they want to be doing, who they are and who they want to be. There's no bridge there. They just effort their way there. And what happens? They get to about 100K in income. So they get into the top eight, 10% of the US and 100K of income isn't as much as it used to be, but six figures is still a great uh, marker for some financial freedom in your life to stop thinking so much about bills and start to think about more about people and relationships. But they get right about to this 100K mark and every step that they take, every about 20,000, what they do is they pick up a new habit to cope. They, 
they neg- they find something new to neglect, right? They start to drink a little bit more. They start to eat a little bit more. They start to watch more TV. They start to neglect their family a bit more. They stay long hours at the office. They justify it and they say, well, I'm the one who's making all the money. I've got to work around here. Somebody's got to work around here. Well, don't I pay all the bills? Why can't you take care of the children? There's there's a litany of things that you may have may have heard. Oh, I've got to work. Somebody's got to work. This is what owning a business is like. This is what being in sales is like. You're gone a lot. And listen, I understand those. I just think that those may be misguided. I think that the ideas behind it are right and the effort is right, but the response is wrong. We don't need to have jobs that replace our life when we got the job to enhance our life. We don't need to have businesses that replace the life when we built the business so that we would have something that would support the life, right? It's ownership, it's flexibility, it's desire and drive to head towards my goals, not just an endless to-do list that causes more stress so that we're less present at home. Sound familiar? I know it did for me. I know this was this was the exact formula for me to be burnout and be not present with my family, to be a hero at work and a zero at home. And I, uh, for me, I didn't need that anymore. So we can't work from right to left anymore in this. Okay. What, what's the result? And listen, you may get way above 100K, but what you'll find is that you become a bit more of a bit more unlikable and people don't want to be around you. So you may get up to 150,000, be on the chopping block. Do you know the number one way that companies today who are traded on the Fortune 500 raise, uh, raise their stock prices? It's layoffs in the fourth quarter. You know who gets laid off? Middle management. Middle management all the time. There are, the older you get, the more experience you have, the, the more people there are lined up outside your, your corner office door who are willing to do twice your work for half your pay, right? And if you become unlikable, you build these habits, you're just building excuses. You're just building the case against you working there long term, right? So maybe you can get to 200 to 300,000, but the question is, how, how well do you sleep and how long will it last? So what's the solution? This is the solution that I've come up with and I've watched it work not only with myself, but hundreds of people on my team. I've watched people use this to uh, change their life, change their relationships, pay off debt, buy new houses. I've watched them show up as a completely different person, the person who could be successful. And that's what I want to help you do. I don't want to help you get things. I want to help you become something just like I've been helped. So I'm going to share with you uh, what we've created here. First and foremost, it starts with self. It starts with who we are. It starts with self-perception, self-identity, however you want to call that. Because what we know and what Zig Ziglar told us a long time ago is that we cannot consistently operate. We cannot consistently act in a way that's inconsistent with how we see ourselves. So eventually, our self-identity will, de- will determine our actions. It's what we know won't happen is our actions will not drag our self-identity up. We have to start to look at how we see ourselves and to change that. We have to start to look at how we perceive ourselves, what we deserve. There are so many things that are built in and born in uh, to us over years that we really don't believe. We, they're just thoughts. They're assumptions that have continued through our, uh, throughout our lives. We have not broken up the momentum of the assumption. I'll show you how to do that. So it starts from working right to left. It's the, instead of working from what I need to do to what I want, we've got to do what Stephen Covey talks about when he says we have to begin with the end in mind. What is the end that we're looking for? Not what can we do today, but what is the end that we're looking for? And how does everything we do on a daily basis tie into that end how does it help us get there how is the how if there are things that we're doing that aren't helping us achieve our goals achieve becoming the type of person who can get the things that we want not only the type of person who drives that type of car but the type of person who makes that type of money and the type of person who has that type of spouse and the type of person who has those type of kids and the type of person who can live in that neighborhood without stress 
right? That type of person. Because as you become it, you build it. And as you build it, you become it. We don't want this to be a situation where you just get really good at asking people for what you want, but you have to depend on them to give it to you. That's not, a, that's not what becoming a winner is. That's what becoming a beggar is, right? And we want, we want to help you to unlock your potential to become a winner. So let's talk about it. We move from, we move from right to left. We move fr first from this self-identity and then we realize, okay, in order to be this person who gets these results over here at the self-identity, not I make, I make $100,000, but I am the type of person who provides $100,000 value. I am the type of person who provides the million dollar value. I am the type of person who provides a 10 million, 100 million, billion dollar value, right? I am that person, not the person who receives, but the person who gives, right? That's where it all starts. We all know this in our minds, but we haven't heard it yet. We're not familiar or we just need to be reminded. So we start with who we want to be, the, uh, the outcome we want. We go to, what am I going to need to get there? What am I going to need to get there? Why is that question so important? We all know this. We all know how this works. But I remember being at, at a place in my life where things had started to get good. The business that I was growing was was growing and the cash flow was coming in. The year before, I had put 62,000 miles on my car, hustling to go see the people and grow the teams in my business, to have influence, to sell insurance to clients, to build my book of business, to do everything, right? To do everything as well as raise a family. And I had earned my way up to this position in a uh, this position in my company where I had the opportunity to take some of the leftover money and invest it into a new car and really just buy a new car. That car was not an investment; it was a it was a purchase, right? Um, and so I was I was like, man, I I really I really like this car. I saw it at the dealership. See, I drove down to Jacksonville and I started to, uh, I, I, I knew I wanted a certain type of car. I knew I wanted a BMW. So I go down to this BMW dealership and there are two cars sitting side by side. One is this white BMW. It looks really good, but it's a little bit underpowered. And there the other one was a space gray 2015 BMW 50i with the executive package 480 horsepower it was yeah, i think it was uh, it was like four and a half seconds 0 to 60 oh my gosh blacked out tinted out it was awesome see before that moment i hadn't seen any others like it I thought it was one of a kind. I thought this thing was such a scarce resource that maybe they just built it to put it in this lot just for me. All right? That soon changed, but that's what I thought at the moment. I test drove it. It was perfect. It was perfect. I buy the car. I start driving back from Jacksonville, Florida. Over the next six hours, I saw more space gray 2015 BMWs, almost my exact car than I ever had. Why? Because now I had it. Now I was holding it. What we recognize in abundance are the things that we hold in our life. Another story about that same thing. I remember the first time uh, that I went to a Four Seasons hotel. Four Seasons hotel, they get crazy. They're a luxurious hotel, best service, amazing adventures. My son and I would go on fishing trips, surfing trips uh, down in Costa Rica, been to one in Hawaii. A lot of the places we're staying there are between two and $3,000 a night. That wasn't true earlier on in my career, but I'm so thankful for the partnerships that I've built, the values that I've been able to, uh, uh, the value that I've been able to add to people around me over the long term. that what I, I was able to stay there. You know what else I saw at both of those Four Seasons hotels? A ton of people. They were almost sold out. Two to three thousand dollars a night. I saw more people at those Four Seasons hotels than I have seen in La Quinta in Middle America. That blew my mind. How do all these people have this money? There was one company who was throwing, uh, throwing a dinner for their whole team. I said, I'm thinking about money wrong. I'm thinking about value wrong. See, I thought this was so rare and it was only so rare because I hadn't held it in my mind before I held it in my hand. Once I held it in my hand, I could see how common it was because now it got in my head. 
And that's what success is like. What success is, is when you're so far away from it, it's hard to see those opportunities for success, even when they're knocking on your front door, because you don't, you don't know what they look like. It's so easy to see what you know, which is scarcity, failure, uh, drama. Uh, it, it's so easy to see being tight on money, being, uh, being stressed out all the time, to see reasons for that, to see mistrust, to see chance and circumstance as a drivers of our life, but that's not true. Right. So we have to we have to start to be able to hold these things in our mind before we were able to hold them in our hand. And so we must start with that, uh, with envisioning things. The most powerful way to envision things is with I am statements. Right. Most people will say uh, this is what I do. Right. And as a young child, we're asked, who do you want? We're, we're asked, uh, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? What do you want to do? And I think that's a big part of us forgetting that imagination of who I am. Right. Who I am, because my son didn't dress up as someone who was going to do something when he was using his imagination and putting on his costumes. He was dressing up as Batman. He was dressing up as fireman. He was dressing up as a fireman. He was putting on clothes of who he wants to be. I want to protect people. I want to fight crime. I want to fight fires, right? He was there, not, not these separate tasks that we seem to be so focused on as adults when we get into this survival mode. So when it comes to I am statements, these are crucial. And we start with I am. And what's a good outcome that you want now, right? What is the most important thing to you? Is it your family? Is it your health? Is it your success? Is it your money? Is it the car you drive, the places you go? Is it that you, is the most important thing? Do you travel? Uh, Travel, I'm not sure. I'm not sure where you are in your life. I'm not sure what you really desire. But for me, it was important to start writing some of these I am statements because until I put my actions into my identity, I will move away from the actions. But, I, but my identity is something that's fixed and growing. It's something that can't be swayed. It's like uh, the difference between putting something in someone's head, which is around the skill side, and in their heart, which is around the identity side. So I am what? I... I'm a great friend. I am a great father. I'm a great husband. I'm a great worker. We start with a couple of these identity statements around relationships that are the most important to you. So for me, I am a strong, peaceful, and engaged husband. And I want want you to feel free to press pause on here and as we're doing this exercise for you to write it down i am a strong peaceful and engaged husband a lot of people have a goal of fr- they start from right to left and they may have a goal but it says i don't want i don't want a bad marriage anymore right my goal might be i want my wife to like me right i want my husband to like me i want to i, I want to be in a peaceful marriage Right. Let's start with an I am statement instead of how we want the circumstances or other people that we don't control to change. Let's use our second one around work, around your business, around your job, around your occupation. And hopefully, because when we personalize and we put a job into our identity, we stop working for a living and we start doing a life's work. We start to move from just a simple job to a vocation because it becomes all of us that we put into it. Not all the time, but we put all of ourselves. We're fully present. We're fully powerful at the intersection of people and processes. So let's talk about our business. I am a mass, a massively valuable and profitable business owner. And some people, some people make the mistake of waiting on this. They're, 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 
they're not a business owner yet and they say, I want to be a massively valuable and profitable business owner. Don't focus on where you're going to be in the future. I mean, we're beginning with the end in mind, but if you're not a business owner and you're an employee right now, you cannot be a massively valuable and profitable business owner if you're not a massively valuable and profitable employee. Think about the risk. You don't have any risk when you're an employee. The only risk is if you don't show up, you don't get paid. With a business, the risk is if you don't show up, if, if you don't give all of yourself plus a little bit more and continue to learn and continue to grow and the money's not right and the market's not right, right? So start where you are. If you're an employee, if you're a salesperson, if you're a doctor, if you're a lawyer, whoever you are, start to be massively valuable and profitable where you are. And before you know it, you'll figure out that that cage can't hold you anymore that you're ready to be your own boss, own your own dream, own your own business, whatever that next step is. Let's talk about money next. So many divorces happen as a result of a lack of resources around money. As a, a, a lack of resources, I don't mean just the money, the ability to communicate around money. And I think that's because people want it, but they don't know how to ask for it. People want it, but then they push it away, right? They have this idea that, that, that in order for me to make money, somebody's got to make a lot of money. Somebody else has to make less. That's not true. Capital is printed all the time, more capital than you can imagine. There are more people at Four Seasons. There are so many BMWs out there. Don't forget that success is not only significant, it's abundant. And it's out there for someone like you because you're willing to take the time and watch this video and grow yourself personally and start to write the check to yourself to improve yourself with your own time and attention. That's powerful. Let's go to the next uh, section. How much do you make? Right? How much do you make? I am, I am earning fill in the blank. What's your number? I know the first time I did this exercise, it was 100,000 a year. I, it was 100,000 a year. I said, I am earning 100,000 a year. You know what I did? I made 75,000. I made 75,000 because right here was, I'm a strong, peaceful, and engaged father. And that's not who I had been before. And, I, and so my priority was my family at that time. So I really worked 35 to 40 hours a week when I first became a broker with Symmetry Financial Group and started the Delaney Agency. I, I was working like, 30 to 35 hours a week. Very in the beginning, maybe 40, but then I learned how to I learned how to instead of selling people, I learned how to help them buy. I learned how to be more effective at my job. So, I said, I am earning six figures. I I missed it in my first year, I'll I'll be honest, but I became part of the person who I was looking to and the other part catch caught up. Within 5 years, I went from making 75,000 in that year to making 75,000 a month. Within 7 years, I had I had broken my first $100,000 month, right? Set goals and be patient and persistent. So I am earning what? Is it, you know, for me, I want to get to the place where I'm earning a million dollars a month. I know there's going to be value attached to it right? Wherever you've been, set a new personal record. Don't blow it out of the water. See, when I said I'm earning uh, 100000 a year, I had earned 100000 a year. So maybe it's been a while and you, maybe you have a little bit of amnesia. Maybe life hit you upside the head. You forgot who you were. You forgot that you were exceptionally valuable and you have value and energy to add to the circumstances. But now let's remember and let's get back to that and set that high water mark because water will continue to reach its own level uh, again and again, no matter what kind of container it's in. So I am earning, fill that out. I am earning 60,000, 70,000, 100,000, 200,000, 500,000. But if you've only earned 100,000 before, don't say 500,000. Go after 150 because if you can earn an extra 50,000, an extra 50,000 in a year, you can do it in six months. And if you can do it in six months, you can do it in three months. And if you can figure out how to be that valuable in a quarter, you can certainly figure that out in a month. I watched my mentor in the insurance business go from a guy who was making $27,000 a year to making $27,000 every six months, to making $27,000 per quarter, to making $27,000 a month, to making $27,000 a day. $27,000 a day. He became as valuable as he was in a year in a day. That's powerful. 
That's true goal setting. That's achievement. So I am earning. Fill that in for yourself. For me, I would get aggressive, but still be reasonable. Let's go to this next. Let's go to this next category. I am a and put a status. This is about an employment status. I am a C CEO. I am a COO. I am a top salesperson in my office. I am a what? What is that? What is the achievement here at work? Right? What is it? What is the achievement at work? This is all this. These middle three are all about work. Okay. Now we're going to get to, we're going to get to the results. If you own your own company, right now you may be the CEO and the janitor, right? And maybe you want to get rid of that janitor title, right? So I am the CEO and the top salesperson in my company. You may be the only salesperson in the company. I'm the top, I'm, I'm the top of three salespeople in my company. I'm only the CEO because I've hired and developed a sales team. I'm, I don't have to do finances. I'm only the CEO, not the CEO and the COO and the CFO. You don't have all the corner offices. That's just the reality when you get started, though. So last one. These last couple. I am a world traveler. Travel is really something that's important to me. Travel, time off, time at the beach. Uh, surf trips, fishing trips, whatever it is. For me, I am a world traveler, right? What is yours? What does yours say? For you, you might say, I am a... Uh, I, I am a, uh, I'm someone who, uh, I am a uh, traveler to uh, Mexico. You may have Mexican vacation in mind. Make sure you start with this I am statement because these are the statements that are going to ground it, that are going to help you to say it every single day. The last thing, I want you to think about all these things and I want you to put them on a timeline. I want you to, I want you to think about a remarkable, re remarkable event that's coming up in your life. Right now, it might be halfway through the year. It might be, uh, might be the new year. I would, I would caution you to set goals around, the, around the beginning of the year because that's that's winter season. That's a hibernation season. So set them in, set them at the either last quarter or first quarter. Set uh, important goal for a lot of folks who are uh, with my financial services company. They're going to a major conference here in about three weeks, and what I do is I tell them to set goals around there. I want them to feel what it's going to be like. I, I know for me, I, I had goals set around my wedding day, right? I wanted to know that when I was standing up at the altar with my wife, that the, I had accomplished these things, that I had made the money that I was looking to make, that I had made the preparation, that we had done the work that we needed to do to set ourselves up for success. So make sure that this is time bound. And I want you to feel, whether it's hot outside, I want you to feel the air conditioning hitting you in the face. I want you to engage that imagination and say, say, if I'm, I, as I'm, as I'm in Denver, I'm going to crack open those doors. The air conditioning is hitting me in my face. I am proud of myself. I am at the top. I am self-confident. I have the confidence to give other people. I'm working from abundance. I'm energized. I, I feel powerful. I feel generous. I feel creative. In order to do that, I want you to list that last I am statement there. What's missing from here, right? What's missing from here? Maybe it's, I am fit. Maybe it's, I am wealthy. Maybe it's, but I'm going to leave that up to you. I want to I caution you from make, uh, making too many of these statements. I find somewhere between six and eight is, is, about, the right, uh, is about the right amount. We'll come back to those soon. Next, again, working from right to left. This isn't about what we have now. It's about what we need, right? And so every piece of this strategy is all about the resources you're going to need. What's the strategy? What's the plan? For me, I used, to be a, I used to be a framer. We would never frame a house without the blueprints, without the plans. Those were the step-by-step -step instructions that were going to help me put together my future, okay? What is that now? 
I need a schedule. See, my schedule is my instruction manual. It's the instruction guide for me to put together my uh, for me to put together my future. That's how I build my future. Right? I need a schedule because if I uh, and why do I need a schedule? Well, if I'm going to be a strong, peaceful, and engaged husband, what that means is that my wife, she doesn't, my wife and my son, see, she doesn't need as much time as I give to my businesses. She doesn't need that much time, but she needs the same quality of me to show up. She doesn't need the quantity of eight hours, but she needs the quality of me being present and prepared. She needs that. So I need to have a schedule so that I can be intentional and deliberate in my time and not bring my work time into my rest and not bring my rest time into my work and not bring my relationship time into my rest or my work time. I need to be able to separate those things. So I need to have this scheduled out. What else do I need a schedule for? In order to be a massively valuable and profitable business owner. That's why I need a schedule. Because if I just am thinking and reacting to what I'm going to do, then I'm running my business, I'm building my business, or I'm building my job job or I'm waiting to create value based on chance and circumstance rather than the the vision values that are going to help me to build the company. If I want to earn this income, right? I was doing the math. I I went out and uh, we had a new platform for sales. And as a leader, I, I'm, I'm, I am an engage, I am an engaged leader. I'm an engaged leader. What that meant to me is I saw some people struggling in sales. I wanted to figure out if it was circumstance or if it was in their head. So I went out and I used this new platform to uh, to make sales. And what I realized was through our sales system and platform that a guy who has his GED and his high school diploma and no further education was able to make $700 per hour. That is crazy. That's absolutely crazy. But without a schedule, I would have never seen it. Right? I'm a world traveler. I need a schedule. I need, I need to know that, and I did this back in 2014. What I, what I did, I worked three weeks a month and I took one week off. I ended up with 12 weeks of vacation. That's three months of vacation. Unless we're intentional and deliberate about that, we can't do it. If it wasn't for reading the four hour work week, I would have never thought that that was possible, but that I began to identify with that. And I started to create that in my life. So everything in here needs me to have a schedule. So if I don't currently have a schedule, the good news is I can build it. And the great news is, did I say that you have to use a digital schedule, the electronic schedule? No, use the schedule that works best for you. Not the one you should use, the one that works best for you, the one that helps you to stay on track the best. For me, in the beginning, that was a paper schedule. Today, I do okay with an electronic schedule through uh, Google, and my calendar tells me what to do. Not chance and circumstance, not how I feel, not if I wake up early, go to bed late. My calendar tells me what I need to do today in order to build the best tomorrow. I need, what else do I need? I remember listening to uh, John Maxwell. And John Maxwell was put on a seminar and a young man stood up and he talked about wanting to build a business. And John Maxwell asked him one question. He asked him, what is your personal and professional development plan? And the young man said, well, I read books. And he said, that sounds like part of a plan. What is your personal and professional development plan? What is your plan to develop yourself personally and professionally? See, a lot of times we have this goal around earning, but we don't have a goal around increasing the value we have to offer our coworkers, our boss, our the business we work for, the business we own, uh, the business we're growing. We don't have a plan around that. We don't have a plan. Well, I'm not good at sales. Can you put the word yet in that? Develop a plan to get better at sales. Learn how to ask better questions. Learn how to be assumptive. Learn how to make people feel good when they're around you. Learn how to help people make the decisions that are best for them. Uh, you know, whatever whatever that is in your personal field, do you have the personal and professional development plan? What would that look like? For me, a full-scale plan looks like this. Looks like reading. Looks like writing, journaling, whatever you want to call it. Looks like meditation.
prayer, exercise. It looks like learning healthy ways to re-energize. How do you rest? Who do you rest with? All right. That's a plan. Some some of the best books that I know for develop, uh, for creating that plan, um, uh, the uh, the Miracle Morning has a great platform for how to do that. We have something called the Whole Authentic Method. Uh, that's the Whole Authentic Formula. That's going to really help you out. That's it's just a simple process that you do every morning to get your brain on track. Um, but without the exercise, right, the reading doesn't help because we don't have the energy. Uh, if I'm working from left to right, I take out exercise because that's just taking my time and I'm doing and doing and trying to get through it, right? So if I want to be a strong, peaceful, and engaged husband, I need to learn how to not react to everything my spouse says. If I want to be a strong, peaceful, and engaged father, I have to learn how to not react to my son. I need to learn how to encourage and celebrate him because I know that positive feedback is going to be, is going to give him the best possibility. And that correction, when it comes in small doses and it's firm, that's really going to help guide him. So in order to, in order to be these things, I need my personal development plan. That's the reason I'm doing the personal development because I need to become the type of person over here. You guys get it? Every single thing we do here, every single thing we want to be here, we have to have a plan, have a resource for here. Okay. This next one, it may be controversial, but I don't care. I'm here to help you. I'm not here to, uh, may, I'm not here to have everybody agree with me. I don't think it is very controversial. It's not to me because anybody who I've seen engage this has, has gone to the next level. Okay. If you have baggage that keeps dragging you backwards and keeps going around, like if the same things happen over and over again, you find yourself in the same circumstances. Well, you know, I, I've been, I've been married three times. It may not be the other person. It may not be that somehow these, you, these people all find you and you're attracted. Maybe it's because you're attracted to the wrong person and we have to fix that attraction, right? I, every time I save money, I end up, something ends up happening. Well, if that happens every time, who's there every time? Is it you or is it somebody else? It's probably you. See, I don't find, I don't find that the victim the same victim is always at the scene of every crime, but I do find that the same perpetrator is, right? So if you find yourself at the, at the scene of every crime, you may not be the victim. You may be the perpetrator. I had to learn how to stop being the perpetrator in my life. I had to learn how to stop being the criminal who was stealing my future from myself. So if you find that you have baggage that keeps drawing you back, keeps putting you in a, a bad situation, you need to get a therapist. You need to get a therapist. Go find somebody and listen, not all therapists are good, but there are good therapists out there. Do interviews with them, find them, whether it's in person. Decide if, you know, especially, especially if you had some trauma when you were young around your mother and your father, uh, your mother or your father, figure out what, you know, I need a male therapist, I need a female therapist, I need the type of therapist who's not just going to accept me, but they're going to challenge me so that I can become liberated from this baggage because I'm trying to fly into a new place. I'm trying to fly at a new level in or order to do that. The baggage I can carry is limited, just like on the airlines. I need to be able to cut that away. Maybe that's not it for you. Maybe you've dealt with your baggage. Maybe you've resolved with your past. Maybe you're not judging your past anymore. Maybe you've moved away from that, realize you can't control it, and you've been healed from that, and now you're you, not just an accumulation of the crap that's added up over your life. But maybe you're hitting the same ceiling over and over again. Listen, Brian, I've got a schedule, and I do some reading, I do some writing, but I just can't seem to get over this. You hit the ceiling. See, I think therapists are for baggage and I think coaches are for ceilings. And you may say, I don't, have an, I don't have enough money to have a coach. And I'll tell you this, that you may not have enough money to have a coach now, but you start putting these other strategies in place, the money will be there. The money will be there. And you just, you may not have the money to hire a coach, which a lot of times a therapist and a coach may come in the same person, 
but if you don't have the money to hire a coach and they should charge by the session, don't allow them to charge you for 90 days. Don't allow them to charge you two grand. Don't charge by the session, pay 200, pay 150. Allow them to know that you're on a growth plan and you will elevate their pay as they go. That's what I did with my first coach, right? So I got a coach in my life and the coach started to tell me the things that were wrong with my thinking. See, I thought my confident feedback to my bosses, that's what made me valuable. It turned out it wasn't that at all. It was my curious questions. I thought I didn't want to be a pushy salesman. It turned out that instead I was, a sca I was scared and I was more concerned about how they were thinking about me than having reasonable conversations with people and helping them get to the next level. Right, And a coach had to enlighten me on that. See, I thought I was really there for my team. But every time we talked about the heart, I went back and instructed the head and I was wondering why they wouldn't move. It's because mind power doesn't move people. Heart power is the horsepower to move people to the next level. Right? And I need this therapist and a coach because right now I'm not a world traveler and I think it's a money problem when it's really a meaning problem when it's really a purpose problem, when it's really an imagination problem, because I don't see it in my head and, and feel it in my heart, I don't hold it in my hands, and I, I can't fly there. I'll tell you that, that it's an amazing thing when you get to show your children the world and open up their life and show, show them all the different kinds of people and all the different kinds of beliefs and all the different places in the world. It's an amazing, uh, it's an amazing opportunity that my parents were able to give to me and I've been able to multiply to my son, right? What other things might go in there? You might say, you know what? I'm sitting here and I've got, I, got bought, uh, I bought into the work from home culture and it turns out I do a lot less work and that's why I'm earning this. It's because I'm quiet quitting. That's why I'm earning that. So what you may need is an office in here. What you may need is, hey, I may need a partner. I may need a partner. That might be the resource that I need. Whatever it is. But every resource that you need in here ought to be tied to just about every I am statement. Hey, this is Brian Delaney with Unlock Potential. I want to invite you to join our Patreon, where we release to you exclusive content so that you can get to the next level of your life and have the tools necessary to build the life of your dreams, have the relationships that you desire, and truly be a part of a community of people who not only desire growth, but are making it happen now. We'll see you there. Okay, last circle, skill. And this is where most people start. They start with a to-do list every day, every day. And that to-do list is probably eight pages long and never gets finished. It, it doesn't even get reprioritized. These are the five, just call it five. These are the five vital things you must do every day or every week to win. And each one of these activities, each one of these skills that you're building uh, they have to be attached to this outcome. I'm a strong, powerful, and engaged husband. What does that mean that I do every single day? Right? Every single day, I message my wife or call my wife after I've left the house. Today, I, uh, I sent a message to my wife. I love you, babe. It's great. Probably not politically correct, but, <laughs> but that's, how, that's how I do it. Right, Because I want to be a strong, peaceful, engaged husband. I also want to earn a lot of money at work. And if I'm thinking about my wife rather than just communicating to my wife, then I've, I'm trying to be in two places at once and I end up disappearing in both. All right. Number two. Number two. I want to be a massively valuable and profitable business owner. I want to earn quite a bit of money. I want to achieve a certain title. I want to be a world traveler. So what does that mean? I've got to take some time to put in this personal and professional development in a schedule. And so when do we do this work? We do this work in the morning. Studies are sh showing that the best time to work out is in the morning. It's the best part of your circadian rhythm in order to uh, have the best results where you're not just creating inflammation, you're creating fat loss as well as muscle growth at the same time, as long as your exer exercise routine is right. And we're going to have more on that in just a couple of months that we're going to drop some stuff that you have never seen before that has helped me not only shed weight but recomposition my body without the without the use of a lot of the extra crap that people try to sell you we're not here to market to you we're here to give you the instructions on how to unlock your potential and have a great life so to personal and professional development so what i do 
is for you, it might be, it might be less than this. For me, some days it is less than this. I'm not perfect. I'm just making progress. So 30 minutes. And inside of that book that I told you about, The Miracle Morning, he talks about this metaphor, I'm um, sorry, this, uh, this acronym called SAVERS, right? SAVERS. And that encompasses all of this, okay? So 30 minutes for SAVERS. Read the book. You'll find, out, you'll find out what that acronym stands for. But just give yourself 30 minutes. It doesn't have to be an hour. It has to be a simple routine that you can recreate no matter where you are. See, my exercise routine does not depend on me attending a certain gym. It just attends, it just depends on me attending. Just get an exercise routine. Just get a life routine that needs you to attend, to show up and start. It doesn't need a ton of equipment, a ton of watches, a, a ch some sort of chest monitor or step monitor. It j it's simple. It's simple. So 30 minutes on the personal and professional development plan. Uh, a lot of times what people will do is they'll focus on personal development, but they'll never become better at the things that they need to do to earn more money, to gain new titles, and to become more massively profitable in their space. Right? What's the next thing I do? I talk to people. Talk to people. We always talk to people. So many people in their position... They get focused on the what to do rather than the who to call. Who do I need to connect with today? So talk to people. Part of my self-development is to send messages of affirmation and care and appreciation and gratitude to people. That's not what that is. That's what number two is. If I'm going to talk to people, I need to call the most important people on my team. You might be growing a business and we can very easily get distracted by the what to do instead of the who to be with and make sure to call the people. Have that what to do list, but more importantly, the who to call. Who to call, check in with people, not on their progress this week. Check in on them as a person, as a human being, right? Get into people's head, the people around you. Get into that and speak life into those. Not don't, what, if people start talking to you about their problems, start talking about solutions and great things and positivity. See, people who are mediocre, mediocrity loves company. But when you bring positivity into that environment, energy, and you may not always feel like it, so drink an extra cup of coffee, bring some more energy to the table, right? Hype yourself up, hit your chest a couple of times, do some push-ups, whatever you need to do in order to bring energy to the table. But if you've done this work before, you've exercised and you've turned your heart into a power plant for the rest of the day, talk to the people and start to give that energy, start to pass the vision, start to pass uh, the confidence, the conviction over to them uh, through your communication. Number four, I set and reset. I set and reset. What that means is that I have set myself up for the day. I take time to reset throughout my day as I'm doing the work, right? So number four might be the most vital thing that I have to do that day, okay? So on that skill side, that might be, you know, if I'm in sales, it might be, uh, you know, you might, uh, if you're in sales, talking to people, so you're connecting, you're, uh, you're not connecting with your current customers, you're reaching out to new prospects because you're building momentum for the day. So number four might be calls. The calls that you may, you may have to make 300 calls that day. You may have to, uh, you may have to, um, you may have to finish a project. You put the project Whatever the most important thing that you need to get done there for that day that's going to build the momentum, you do that and you do that in the morning. There's a saying about this, right? We, oh, I forget exactly what it is. It's like we slay the dragons in the morning so we can, I forget exactly, but make sure and put that in the comments. Put the, put the saying in the comments, but what we need to learn how to do is we need to learn how to do the difficult things that we don't want to do. We need to learn how to do that early when we have high willpower. The fifth thing for the day, right? How are you going to end your day? How are you going to end your day? For me, what this is about is this is how I'm going to, th this is going to be me writing my to-do list for the next day, right? To-do list in order of priority and set up to win tomorrow. A lot of people 
will just leave their desk in a mess. So the first thing that they have to do tomorrow is to organize the chaos from the day before, right? I need to write down my to-do list. I remember this in construction. There were two times of the day that we were never paid for. When we were rolling up and rolling out. What did that mean? When we were finishing our day and, and getting prepared for the next day. See, we would come in the morning already having the list of what we needed to do. So we already stopped by the lumber yard. We already stopped by the store to get everything we needed because those were not times that, that was not profit making time. That was preparation time. We need to handle the preparation. We need to know what we're gonna be prepared to do in the next day. Why? Because unless we build momentum day to day, we are gonna go back to working right to left, right? And there's no way without that momentum that I'm gonna be a world traveler. There's no way without that momentum that I'm gonna earn that work title. There's no way with any of that. But part of this is part of my development plan, right? If I have the development plan, then I'm gonna write my to-do list. I'm gonna know what's important. See, each part, when I talk to people, and I've had my coaching, I'm gonna reach into their heart and I'm gonna get their energy because I've already had somebody who's unlocked that in me for the day or for the week or for the month. And so I'm gonna be able to talk to more people, right? I've got, my, I've got it scheduled in, so I'm right here. Now what you have is a cohesive plan to build your life. So what do you need to do from here? How do we make, how do we make this? How do we make this work? First and foremost, this has to be something that we're engaged with every single day. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach you one secret that I've learned over the years and it's helped me to become massively successful and help others to do the same thing. We need to find the trap doors in our brain, right? Because it's so easy for things just to skim off the top of our brain and when the next set of circumstances comes in, it's replaced. So how do we find the trap doors into our brain? Because we need to get it from the front of our brain down here down to where it's, a re, uh, it's an automatic response and reaction. The best tra trap door for the brain that I've found is our peripheral vision. It's what we see in our peripheral that's gonna affect us most. We hear it time and time again, how circumstances, how environment shapes so much of how people are. Why is that? It's not what they're focused on, it's what's in their peripheral vision, it's what's off to the side. That's why environment has such a big impact in shaping us as people for the good and for the bad. So how do we do that? We need to take these I am statements and put them up where we see ourselves every single day. You do not need to look pretty in order to be successful. Okay, I can promise you, there's so many people who spend so much time worried about how other people look, what they think, all of that crap. You know what those people are about? worried about? How other people look, what other people think, what other people expect. Stop worrying about other people and what they think and, and what their judgment is gonna be of you. You're not doing this for them. You don't get to live their life, you just get to live your life. Put this on your mirror, put it in the top left hand or right hand corner of your mirror where you see yourself every day and what you'll start to do is you'll start to realize that these have come true. That's step one. Step two, take at least two minutes every day to start to think about these. One minute of saying these out loud. Saying them out loud, I'm gonna close my eyes. I'm, I'm a massively valuable and profitable business owner. I am a massively valuable and profitable business owner. Just all you're gonna do is you're gonna take two of these I am statements per day and you're gonna say two of them out loud. I'm a massively valuable and profitable business owner. I am earning, I, I am earning $10,000 a month. I am earning $100,000 a month. I am earning, all right? I, I am, I am a VP of sales in my company. I am, I am a business owner. I am the CEO. I am a strong, peaceful, and engaged husband. You're going to take one minute and do that. You're going to take the second moment. And you're going to start to imagine what life would be like and how life would be different if you were the strong, peaceful, and engaged husband that you desire to be. How would your, how would, how would your spouse respond to you, right? What if, what if you are, what if you are that, that caring badass wife who inspires, uh, inspires her husband or that just that spouse that brings light and bring, and brings peace to your home and you, you take care of everything. What, what happens when you're that person? How do things change? Oh man, my, my kids are happier. I'm happier. All the stress, I'm making $30,000 a month. All the stress of money has gone away. I'm able to stop thinking about bills and I'm able to start thinking about people. 
I'm able to stop looking at the money and wondering what the market price on lobster is today, even though I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to order unlimited breadsticks and salad. And I'm able to start ordering from the menu from left to right, not worrying about the price, just worrying about the value to me and to my nutrition and my overall fitness and well-being. I'm not thinking about what I can afford. I'm thinking about what I can value. As a world traveler, I, I'm, I'm curious, I'm familiar with other places on earth. I realize those people are just people, not our, not, our, not our enemies. They're not good or bad because they're from a place. They're good people who are trying to do the best that they can. And I wanna go visit this place and see what, what it has for me, right? As a result of that, I've been able to, as a result of envisioning all of that, I've been able to have some incredible experiences both at home and at work and outside for recreation. And I want you to have access to that too, but it starts with that daily meditation. Just take two minutes of your day and start to imagine it and imagine it and imagine it and start to say it and say it and start to say it louder and say it louder and start to say it like you believe it. See, when you start saying this like you believe it, it's gonna resonate through your whole body and that and the vibration of that is gonna create an energy in the world where that conviction is gonna cause people to move toward you because people follow certainty. And maybe you need to be one of the certain people in your community who changes everything. Tell a quick story about this and I'll finish. We've got one gentleman on my team. He was in the process of struggling. He was trying to figure out where he was gonna be. He had a, he had a co collegiate sports career that didn't go the way he thought it would. That was his plan for his whole life. He didn't know what he was gonna do. And I was looking for a partner. I was looking for one, right? I, I, was looking, I was looking for one. I needed a partner. That was one of the strategies that I needed at the time. So I was looking for one. And I, I talked to this guy and I talked to him and he's real busy. He's busy. He's doing a lot of things. It turned out that I thought he was real productive, but he was just busy. And busyness is the idol that most business owners, workers, everybody, th that they all pray to right? Don't be busy, be productive. It turns out I thought he was productive. He was busy. He was making a millimeter of progress in a million directions. And he wanted to find out how he could own his life. He wanted to find a way out. He wanted work-life harmony. He wanted to stop working for a living and start doing a life's work with me. He wanted all that. And so I asked him, I said, what do you want? Because I had done some personal and professional development and I knew I was looking for a partner and I knew that in order to earn more money, I needed to find more people who were in part, who were going to partner with me on this vision and this movement that I knew we could start to get insurance salespeople away from being the desperate and dysfunctional crowd that they were to, to really be able to speak into this place. And he was ready to go. See, the, a lot of, what a lot of people didn't know about him when he came on onto our team was that he was from the poorest city in the poorest county in the country. That the average reading level in his community was about a fourth grade reading level. See, a lot of people didn't know about, know, know about that because he came in and he had already done some of this work and there was more to come. He's not only built a business there and made sales there to increase his own income, He's got an office there. He's increased the income of the people around him. He's bought, he's bought a new house. A lot of people on his team have those new houses, have new houses as well. They're in the process of buying them or building them right now. A whole community of people has gotten debt free. And it wasn't because their education status. I'm sick and tired of hearing that only people who have advanced education can live advanced lives. It's the people who are willing to put advanced effort and be it, be it present in an advanced way. That's who can turn it, turn it around. And that's exactly what this young man has done. And he's become one of the top people in our company, in, uh, in the whole company, not even just in my agency, but he's become one of the top leaders in the whole company as a result of giving himself a chance and going through this exercise time and time again. He didn't just raise the standards for himself and he didn't just raise the standards for his house and his, and, and his group of friends. He's raised standards for the community. He's been able to give charitably to the community, send kids who are sick on trips. He's been able to contribute to make a wish. He's been able to help uh, dig wells with our agency. He's been able to help do all that. And first he had to realize he was worth it. And second, he had to start to believe that other people were too. 
And I hope this process helps you to find that you're worth it and other people are too. And that there is no way for you to do and do and have your life come true. But if you're willing to refire your imagination, if you're willing to start using that tool as a conduit to help you go from the life you have to the future you desire to the life that you want, and if you're willing to put the work into this process, I won't say this process is perfect because if this process was perfect, it would only be there for perfect people, but this isn't. It's just a real process that really works for people who really work it. And that's what I'm excited. So put, you know, make sure to like and subscribe, but put the message in, uh, put your message in there. Let me know what some of your IMs are. Let me know how this work has changed your business, changed your life. Let me know how just doing this really clarified what you want and what you need and what you deserve and how you're gonna start to act more in accordance with the life you desire and who you wanna be, not just what you want. And I'm excited for that because I know at that point, not only will you unlock your own potential, but you'll be able to give that gift to others. Thanks again for joining us for this conversation. Head right over to our Patreon for exclusive content, including more from our conversation today. Thank you all for joining our conversation. We're developing this platform for simple, profound tools and techniques that can help you get the best out of your life and more importantly, unlock potential. You can find me across all social platforms at the Brian Delaney and online. Come visit us at thebriandelaney.com.